Hello, I'm back. How's it going? I'm Codon, and I'm so happy to see you here. We're gonna review, guess what? Going into Scratch, we're gonna review number one, Creative Code Play Session. So if you missed it and you wanna catch up, or if you were there and you just wanna see a refresher, I thought this would be kind of helpful. So Coach Newton has programmed me, code on. So if something goes wrong, like my arm goes behind my head like that, it's not my fault. He programmed this. So if my hand goes like totally crazy, I just, it's not my fault, okay? So sometimes he tries to pretend like, hey, you know, who knows? But anyway, I just wanted to say welcome. And I wanted to review session number one. And that was inspired by the Scratch Team video that they had made about creating scrolling backgrounds. And I thought, wow, that is like so cool. So these are projects that were made. I wanted to review what some of the students had made in our last session. And there's also just a reminder, there is this uh, web studio that's basically a Let's see, I called it your best weekly project. So if you could put once a week your best project, you could share here. I'll look at it and just give you comments. So I just love to see the different ideas and already you can see a creation there of an animation in that cool. So let's get going on. This is kind of the theme. It was a scrolling background. And let me get out of the way a little bit here. Let's just see kind of what our goal is, is to kind of create a type of scrolling background where you can see things moving over here. Uh, there's a butterfly flying, there's some lions walking. And look, the background keeps changing different types of trees. So it's a really cool concept and powerful uh, idea for your projects, whether it's a story or game. So this is what some of the other students created. So I'm going to kind of get out of the way a little bit here so you can see these. I thought it would kind of be fun to feature them. Wow, check this out. Logos, it looks very interactive here with like the names and the sounds. If I put my mouse over the name, look how it pops up. Wow, really nice. Nice job, nice job. And let's see, scroll me. Let's check this one out. Whoa, look at this animation. What great music. I get up, I get down, and I'm wow. jump, then I rock, and we rock. Isn't that so cool? I love it, I love it. Let's see what we've got next. You'll never know till you watch. I love the title sometimes. Uh, just figuring it out. That's okay, it's not a game. So I love how some of the students are kind of like, hey, I can use this for so many different things. Let's check this out. Whoa, don't let the bear know it's there. Stay calm and don't run. Very, very good advice. I like it. Good bear, good bear, good bear. Yeah, see, I'm not even in the Scratch project, but it's kind of fun. All right, nice project. These are like beginners. The thing. I love some of the descriptions in these. Let's see. Oh, awesome. I love that video of the bear. Good job. I like the way it's just kind of like walking along and the tree just kind of comes by here. Look at this. That's awesome. Inspiring. Uh, let's see, a super walk. Just watch. Let's see what he's got going on here. Let's take a walk. I like this. Let's see, he's going to start walking here maybe? I think so. I got a feeling he's got, oh look at the legs moving. He's got the animation starting. And he's going to be adding more to this code. So there's a reminder that like, not everybody's done their code. I'm still working on mine, in fact. Nice work. Nice work. I love the custom animation of the characters. Here's a little scroll me. Oh, awesome. She's walking with Space Dog. So this video might help. How do you fill the gaps in, right? So Scratch is always works in progress. So that's something's number one to remember. Everything is a work in progress, okay? So um, it takes a while to get used to sharing things that you're not done with, but I wanna encourage you to go for it, okay? And here's another bear. 
My first time. Wow, we've got some new coders. First time creating scrolling backgrounds. Do, 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 do. Oh, I like the custom little rocks and also chose the bear animation. Nice, nice. So anyway, I just wanted to share everything we had done. And again, this theme, the scrolling background is based on the Scratch team, Zoe. She's Zinnia in Scratch. So if you want to see uh, more tutorials, she did a tutorial here. We just did it live in our class session. All right, so let's go back to how did we do it, right? So I'm going to go to Scratch, start with Create. I'm going to go pretty quickly so you can always pause this video. So one of the first things that uh, we had done is we really picked um, some artwork to do. We need to have that artwork, but let's start with the characters that you want to be, I don't know, jogging, walking, sliding, slithering through the project, right? So I'm going to go down here and let's pick a sprite and we'll do a little quick animation. So let's see if we've got some good animals. I said slither. Can I do a snake? Is there is a snake kind of animated? Well, the movement's not as animated as I would have liked. So let's let's pick something that looks like they're walking. Oh, there's dog. There's dog two. There's dog one with his tongue. Uh, the dragon. Oh, the fox looks like he's pouncing. I'm looking for a good walking one. Oh, a giraffe. Kind of looks like he's walking. And then there's the rabbit. Oh, let's go for the rabbit. Let's do it. I'm going to do the rabbit. So you notice I've added the little rabbit sprite. And I'm going to say goodbye to Scratch Cat by deleting it here. And here we go, rabbit. We need one rabbit. Now, you'll notice in some of the student videos, we talked about adding more than one character. So let's assume that you have like uh, an adult rabbit and a young rabbit. So let's learn some things about if you right click here, you can duplicate this sprite. So now I have two rabbits. Okay, two different sprites. And we're going to add animation code. And I want this one to be a baby one. So I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm changing the size here. If I go from 100 to 50, that's one half. Do you see that where I did that? I just like typed it way down there. Okay, and you can kind of follow my mouse. 50, and there's my kind of baby rabbit. Okay. All right, let's go back to the bigger rabbit and add the animation code here. So remember we have our code blocks and for this I'm going to use a couple of things. I'm going to use the looks blocks to change the costumes to have the computer. I'm going to give the commands to the computer to change its costumes and then I'm going to use a control block that makes it repeat the action over and over and then I'm going to have an event that says start hopping as soon as someone clicks that green flag to start the project because I want it hopping right away. So here we go. Let's get these blocks of code. Now remember, all you've got to do is drag it over. So the first one I mentioned is the green flag block. I'm going to put that over there. And this is pretty simple animation. The costume, I'm going to the next costume. Now you may ask me, hey, how did I know there was another costume that was animated? Up there, you see that tab? It says costumes. Click on that and that'll give you a hint if you have, oh, there's the rabbit. See, there's the hopping. So if you want to draw your own, this is kind of how uh, coders create their own animations. I'm using the ones that are already here for the hair. So we're telling the computer to change from this costume to this costume over and over and over again pretty quickly. So that's what this next costume command does, okay? So I just wanted you to know how this works. So if I were to put that up here, that just means it just changes once because I only told it to say go next costume. Well, for animation, we want it to do it lots of times. So let's take a look in these control blocks over here, okay? Here we go, control. And I'm gonna use something called this forever loop. Okay, now this says whatever I put in here as a command, repeat it over and over and over. So I'm going to pull this apart and stick it inside the forever loop. And we can test it by just clicking on this, right? So you can just test just this code and say, you know what? Let's see what happens if I make this 
the computer follow these commands. Here we go. Let's see. Whoa, that is one fast wrap. <laughs> now, since we said do this forever, the computer is going to keep going forever until luckily Scott's team was smart and put a stop sign. Phew. I was tired just watching that rabbit hopping around. Okay, so here we go. We've got the forever. Now we need to slow it down. Now, what's kind of cool is if you notice up here, we have a command that tells the computer, you know what? You need to slow down a little bit because your processor is super fast and we'd like to see some more images of the rabbit hopping. So let's try one second. That's kind of a super slow rabbit. So this is where learning your uh, decimals is important. So less than one would be, say, 0.5. There's half. Still too slow. I like 0.2 or 0.1. I'm going to do point two, and I'll explain to you why I'm doing that. And I connected it, so this starts right away. As soon as someone starts my program with the green flag, there's my little simple animation. Okay, so here's the cool thing about Scratch is I know I want my other uh, baby rabbit to also be hopping. So instead of having to click over here and start with a blank set of commands, we know these commands are kind of handy. So here's a cool little thing. We drag this down and look at the little hair sprite. Do you see that down here? Right down there. He kind of like moved. Sorry, my hand can't reach down there. His hand kind of moved a little bit. Um, I'll go over here so you can see. And you'll see a little bit of a kind of a wiggle right there. That sprite will wiggle when the code is there, okay? So keep an eye on that and watch what happens. I'm going to hover. And you see the wiggle? I let go. Now what happened is this hair still has the code. And now I'm going to go to take a look at this hair. And there it is. It was copied. So now if I click the green flag, both of them are hopping. Now, one thought is, uh, have you ever seen a small toddler walking next to a big adult? Who's taking more steps? The toddler, right, with the smaller legs. So I thought, well, let's make it look realistic. So if you have the adult one hopping at point two, we need a smaller number for the younger one. So let's make that one hop point one. Let's see if that looks pretty good. Kind of looks pretty realistic. Like the big adult is kind of hopping faster. All right, so now we have our creatures and you can put them where you want, right? I'm going to have like the adult and the child going, hey, wait for me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm trying to keep up. That's pretty realistic, right? All right. Uh, I love to save now. Okay. So we have our animated characters. Now we need, let's work on the artwork for the scrolling uh, background. What do you think about that? I think that would be a good, a good place to start next. So let's see, um, I'm going to look at drawing some code, okay? So I'm going to get out of the way down here, and we're going to engage your artistic mind. Choose a sprite, but we're not going to pick something from the library. We're going to do a paint, and this is where we're going to start drawing our background. And you'll notice I click equals and a little minus so we can see this minus kind of shrinks our entire canvas. Uh, let me just show you what it does. Let's see if I pick the paintbrush. We're going to be pick, picking a couple tools over here. So if you look up here, uh, there are different tools we're going to pick. So that's important to kind of keep up with which tool does what. And I want you to definitely to experiment on your own. So I picked the paintbrush in this case. And I'm just kind of showing you that if I go outside of this area, you'll notice those are the portions that you can't see on the screen. So this allows you to draw something larger than what you will actually see on the screen. So that's just something as an idea for you to have it. Like, hey, you could draw something bigger and have it move back and forth. That's kind of what we're gonna be doing. My quick way to erase is this little undo button up here. So I just keep clicking that, and it did an undo on my, whoops, somehow I got a, 
a, a rabbit costume in here. That was kind of interesting. I'm not sure how that happened. Sprite, I have a hair and it must have copied the image. Wow, that was cool. I never had that happen before. Maybe I found a bug, I don't know. Look, all I did was undo on a blank costume and suddenly I picked up a hair costume. Very interesting. All right, that's something to be explored later. So first thing we're gonna do is click this big square here and let's pick a color for, uh, I'm gonna pretend I'm on Mars with a red sky. So let's pick our sky color. And I'm gonna kinda go like, uh, let's do the whole thing. Do the whole, you notice how I'm kinda covering more than the screen. So this is my Martian red sky. Okay, now I need another box with a different color to be the landscape. So let's see, let's pick something that you'd like. Now a lot of people were kind of doing it. I'm going to do a little bit of soil-ish brown maybe. Turn it down. You'll notice how I'm changing the colors up here. So if you're like, hey, how did Coach do that? Uh, I just want to show you uh, up here. I'm playing with the fill colors. This little button unlocks a couple things for you here and you'll see. Okay, so I'll show you again. Here I am, I click on the fill and I move these color bars around. So this is an actual color saturation. How deep do I want it to be? And then how bright do I want it? So this gives me kind of a darker texture. And a hint I got from one of the students while we were doing this was, uh, this is good in this outline. We don't want it to have an outline box around it. So let's, um, make sure we pick zero here. So if I type in zero, kind of get that little red line there. Um, that way it doesn't put any kind of border on our box, okay? Uh, let's see, did I lose my, oh, you know what? I forgot to draw a second box. I should have drawn a second box before changing. Let's get our red sky back. Whoopsie daisy. Let's do our red sky. I think I had it up to here. There we go. Okay. I need to draw a second box for my color. Uh, oopsie daisy. Let me go undo that. Now let me pick the other color. Uh, I was doing kind of a brown, dark brown, Martian earth. And I'm kind of drawing this box here. And I'm kind of trying to match up these edges. You notice how I kind of can grab it with these dots. And this is going to be my horizon. I'm going to make it kind of deep. Okay, so that's my Martian red sky. And this is my um, ground level here. That's kind of what we're simulating. Oh, whoa, what happened to our rabbits? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Okay, so every sprite is like a two-dimensional piece of paper. So if I have a huge poster board and I put it on top of the sheets, of a drawing you may have of hair and another hair on two different pieces of paper, I've totally covered it up with this sprite because it's so large. It covers the whole screen over here. So now we have to go to the code and let's tell the computer which layers of sprites get to be on top and on the bottom. And we know this one here should go all the way to the back. So nice. Uh, of the Scratch team to give us a command. And what do you guess? It's a looks command that says go to, I'm scrolling here. There are two ways to scroll. You can scroll with a scroll bar here, or I'm just using the mouse. And let's see, go to, it's kind of towards the bottom. So the looks has a lot of commands. There's a command that says go to the front layer. Well, that's already happening, but guess what? Look at this little pull down menu here. Do you see that? It's kind of kind of handy. This little arrow, whoops, I just moved my character around. Uh, let's see, let's get a little pointing finger here. If I look at this little pull down menu, check those out whenever you see one of those uh, down facing triangles because that tells you there are a couple options. And here's the command, tells the computer, go to the back layer, I'll click it. And now, boom, there are my hairs. Okay, now these are 
wild, crazy Martian rabbits. Okay, so some of you are like, wait a minute, I thought you said Mars. But hey, this is my scratch project. I can do whatever I want. And that, that's the best part. So I get to create ideas in our head. All right, so this is our background. Now let's add some objects. Now for fun, uh, I like the scratch team's uh, Zidia's creation of a rock. I thought that was kind of cool the way she did that. So I'm going to kind of follow her lead there. We're going to the costume of up here. We're going to the costume and we're going to draw something else again. Okay. We're going to draw a, let's get this um, circle and let's pick a color. I'm going to pretend there's like these weird, I don't know. I like these vibrant colors. Uh, let's say some bright blue rocks or greenish, maybe yellow. I don't know. Let's go with something like this. I'm going to pretend this is my rock and it's on Mars and I'm drawing a circle. There's my circle. Okay. Kind of a small boulder. And what's kind of nice, I'm going to zoom in because I want to show you this tool. This is really cool. It's the reshape. And the reshape, when you select this, it allows you to grab any of these dots. You can twist it and start making all sorts of fun characters. I don't even do twist. I'm just going to flatten it to kind of create the bottom of a rock. And if you wanted to add some more like deformities to your rock, like this rock sketch, you notice I'm putting some more bumps on it. It's kind of a bumpy rock. Okay. But I kind of flattened out the bottom. So now I've got my one rock and let's go to this arrow. Let's select it. This lets me pick objects that I've created. So I'm going to click on the rock and I want to copy it. I'm going to do a copy and paste. And the reason I'm doing that is I want two rocks and I'm just kind of shrinking. So it looks like a little bit of a landscape here. Like I want to see if I put this rock behind the other one. I don't know. I'm going to put a little bit of distance. It looks so if you look over here, it looks like this smaller rock is at a greater distance in the background. Just for fun. Okay. All right. So a lot of artwork takes some time. And let's see how we're doing for time on this one. This is going to be a long video. Um, but again, this is a lot of artwork and it will give you lots of code to work with in the future. All right. So the next thing we want to do is now start having the background move, right? So we've already made it go to the back layer. Um, I want to make sure it always starts in the middle of the screen. So let's go up to... Uh, do you know where to find the motion blocks and tell uh, the blue one of the blue motion blocks here? We're going to tell um, this uh, sprite to start in the middle. So let's click on that blue one. Here's motion. And it's this fifth command right here. Go to a location on the screen. Let's make sure it goes to zero, zero. And that's in case I do something like this, right? And you're like, oh, no, I've dragged it off center. You click on that block and it centers that object, okay? So let's do that at the beginning of the program. So that means we need a green block and it goes to the middle. Okay, and as soon as I hit the green flag, I've got my, got my rabbits moving. Yay! Okay, now we need our scrolling background. I'm going to do a little save. I'm going to go to my project page. Um, green flag, go, and give it a title instead of an untitled number. Uh, Marge, slow scroll. Okay. And I will share it. I always encourage students to share. And it's not in the studio yet, but don't worry. And our progress will get saved. Now we go back to see inside to work with the code again. Let's give those rabbits a break. I'll hit the stop. Otherwise, they're hopping forever, right? Uh, because we have that forever block with uh, the hairs in there. OK. 
Okay, now let's make the background move. Since it's a sprite, uh, this is very different than having a stage. Because let's say we added a stage. Let's just check it out. Let's say we're like, hey, here's my, uh, let's see, something that looks like Mars? I don't know. The hayfield? Maybe not. It's kind of reddish. I'm going to pick the hayfield as an example. Um, I have to hide. Sorry, I have to hide this sprite because it's blocking it. I wanted to show you something about, there's a hide command. I'm going to click on it. And there's my hayfield. But if I look at the code for the hayfield, stage selected no motion block. So I've had some students saying, hey, I have no motion blocks. So right away, you're like, hey, wait a second. If you see this over here, that probably means down there, you're on the stage. And you can't move the stage. So that's why there's no motion block. So it's kind of a hint that we're in the stage. So we want a moving backdrop. That's why we drew it on the background, OK? So let's go back to backdrops. I'm going to get rid of that hayfield by clicking the trash can. And let's go back to this sprite and the code and show it again. So I did show you this. Now, if you forget and leave hide, the computer just remembers the last thing you told it. And it's hide, so we better tell it to show. And if you don't need blocks of code, you just throw it over here. Er, I don't need those anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get our stage moving. So since we have our rabbits kind of hopping, they look like they're going this way, I need the stage and the rocks to go that way. So it looks like they're, they're running across the surface of Mars. So we need to use more motion blocks. So you'll notice that there are definitely a lot of motion blocks way down here. So if I use the scroll bar up here, uh, you'll notice that uh, there are many more commands in the blue section as well as looks. So let's see, let's scroll down. And there's something called change X by. Let's click on that block and look at what happens. Every time I click on it, my stage is going to the right because I'm changing X and making it a larger number. Look at that. It's 210. Every time I click it, it's going that way. Well, what if you want a, an opposite number of 10? So let's drag this block out and let's try negative numbers. See, mathematics comes in really handy. So you're really good at math just by using that in your scratch. You're learning coordinate system. Look at that. Changing x by minus 10. There's the scroll. Now, I called mine a slow scroll. So let's do smaller steps. Let me try minus 3. And again, I'm not, I don't want to click it forever. So here's where we need that control block that says forever. So let's find that forever loop and tell it to move minus direction, and let's just test this block. There it goes. Yay! Now I'm going to let it go off to the end, and it kind of stops there. Now there's a reason I did that. I wanted to see what this number would be. How far would it go before it scratches and says, you know what, there's nowhere else to go. So remember now, this is why I said, hey, I want it to start in the middle for now, and then it will scroll off. But it goes to, in my case, it depends on how big you drew your block. Mine's minus 515. And the reason that's important is, well, this is no good. The rabbits basically run right off the edge of the screen. Now, that could be a pretty fun project by itself. Um, if there was a story to it, who knows what's behind the Mars screen. But we want to kind of have a scrolling screen. So this is where we need to tell the computer, please start over again. So it's kind of like an escalator. I need it to wrap around back to this other side and come through. So as soon as it's reached the end, well, how do we know? We know the end is minus 515 in the x direction. So let's do a little bit of, of coding there and figure that out. Um, oops, sorry, excuse me, I'm fixing my 
computer. So we want to let's see, we need to see if, let me get the right block here. If you'll notice I'm in the control, orange control, I'm going to move this code out of the way so you can see it. If the position of X, that value of X is minus 515, if it goes lower than that, less than, then I wanted to jump back to the other side. So now we're doing a little bit more of these math operators. See these greens? And you'll notice there are some uh, math operators here like greater than, less than, equal to. There are a lot of other cool ones I urge you to explore like random. Random is one of my favorites, but that'll be another class session. And here we're going to say less than because if it goes lower than minus 550, we want it to wrap around. So I'm going to pick this middle one that's the less than. And let's finish filling in the number. So what did I say? Less, if my x position is less than, mine's minus 515. So I'm just going to say, if it goes less than minus 500, then I'm going to want it to wrap around. And I need that x position. Where would you guess that is? I'm curious. Take a guess. There's nothing you can do wrong, and I'm going to give you the answer in a second. But do you think it's motion or looks? Let's go find out. Let's see if you guessed right. It is motion. All the way at the bottom. You notice how I'm scrolling. I almost at the top of the looks commands. There's a value. See how it's oval? So that means the x position because it's a number that changes depending on what the value is. So we're going to have to drag this oval inside of here. Pop. If the x position is less than, and look at this six-sided figure. It fits into this decision for the computer. We're telling computer, please make a decision. True or false? That's the only thing a computer can decide on. Yes or no. True or false? If this is true, if the x position is less than 515, Hmm, what do we want to happen? We want our background to go all the way to the beginning. Let's see. This is where we tell a sprite to go somewhere. Uh, let's see, I scrolled on the commands. Let's, let's get our commands back. If that's true, we want it to go, hmm, not minus 515. How about positive 515? Go there. Okay. So let's try that inside the loop. Here we go. Let's give it a try. Yay, it starts there. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. And it wraps around and it keeps going. Look, forever. My rabbits, they're on the way. Here we go. Okay, so we're getting pretty great progress here. Lots of cool stuff going on. Uh, adding a little bit of variety is, let's see, we need to fill in the gap, right? We'll need to fill in the gap. But before we do, and this is just because I know we're going to be uh, adding some extra little things to our, um, cost, uh, our backgrounds, we want it to kind of look different, right? A little bit different. Adds variety to the background. So you notice over here, I, I went to the uh, costumes, right? Where's my point? Yeah, there we go. Costumes, okay, for my background sprite. And this is where I'm also going to left click here on the costume. So if you left click, watch what pops up. Comes in my mouse, duplicate. So I wanna duplicate this costume. So now I have two backgrounds. Now, if you want to go crazy, duplicate again. Doesn't matter. What we're going to do is let's change the look of this a little bit. So that way, each background will be a little bit different in its costume. So let me show you what that means. Here, we've kind of zoomed in on the rocks. Remember we zoomed in? So I'm going to go equals, centers it, and zoom minus back out. So in this one, I want the rocks to be in a different position because it's going to be a different background. So I'm going to make it look like there are some rocks over here. And this, there's a smaller one over here. Uh, there's a little flip. You can flip 
this rock horizontally. So now it kind of looks different. If I pick it, you notice I'm picking the objects using the select tool. Uh, I can flip it upside down if I kind of want to swivel it a little bit. Kind of a strange looking rock, but I'm adding some variety here on the second costume. And then in this one, uh, let's do the same thing. Drag it. Um, this one I'm moving it so they're all different. So if I look at each three of each of the three costumes I've created, they're all a little different. Um, I think I need the rock to be somewhere visible. So when it scrolls in, it doesn't look like it just appeared. And then I'm going to show you another trick. Now we have these three. And the reason I made you do that first is, guess what? This gap filler, we're going to use a second sprite. But it's going to be a copy of this first sprite. And I wanted you to copy it while you have these cost different costumes already here. So let's do right click on the sprite, just like we did before. Uh, if you remember that, right? So you've got to right click on the sprite down here, right? So let's give that a try. If I right click, duplicate. And that's very handy in Scratch. You'll find those options. So now I have two sprites. And if I go run the code, wait a second. Dun, ba -da -bum. So as Zinnia pointed out, and one of my students, I asked, they're like, yes, because the two sprites in the code are exactly the same. The code was copied and their costumes. So they're right on top of each other. So it's like having the exact same piece of paper on top. So we have to tell one piece of paper to start here and another one to start to the uh, further outside, uh, right or left. So let's see, our first sprite started in the middle. Let's make the second sprite, you'll notice I'm picking the code, have it go to 515 to begin with. 515, and let's give that a try. Whoa, look at that. No more gaps. My rabbits are on Mars. That's what I should call that. Rabbits on Mars. Um, but what happened to our variety? Remember, we, we drew different costumes, but nothing's happening. Guess what? We have to tell the computer to do that. So look up here in the looks commands. One of my favorite ones that we use for animation is next costume. So every time it goes off the edge of the screen and it starts in a new one, let's go to the next costume in the list and watch what happens now. So it comes with the second one and then it goes to a new costume. And remember, we moved the rocks around. We've got that funny flipped one too, right? And the rabbits are kind of running past it. Okay, let's do the same thing to the second sprite. Let's go to the costume and we need to mix it up a little bit or else it totally looks like the other, the other sprite. So I want it to be different. Uh, maybe the small one will just be, whoa, even tinier in the background. And this guy will be tinier in the background. Um, this one, I want a goofy looking kind of tree. So I don't, I'm going to delete this flipped one. And let's import, let's choose a costume tree. I think that's what I did. T-R-E-E. -E. Ooh, a couple trees to pick from. I'm going to pick this one. And you'll notice, wait a minute, I don't want a full costume that goes to tree. Here's a cool trick. You just copy. Sorry, you have to select it first. Copy. Go up here. And paste. And here's my Martian tree. Who says there aren't trees on Mars in my Scratch project? All right. Now I deleted it, right? Because I basically used it just to copy into here. And maybe I'll paste another one into here as well, kind of one that's further away in the background. I'll go like that. So now all of my sprite costumes look differently. Let's look at the code. Remember, the second sprite needs that piece of code as well that says next costume. And let's give it a try. Yay! And there it is. Now my rabbits are running through. There's some small trees. If you want that to scroll faster, 
you could change the x by a, a, a bigger number, a, a larger negative number, like minus 10, and it'll look like they're really zipping through. I did minus 3 on mine. So play around with yours and see how you like it to look. But this is the beginning of the scrolling background. I'm going to hit stop. And what I had done in one of my other projects is I added a separate sprite. If you want to do extra, and I chose one of these trees. Now what I did is I wanted something in front of my sprites. Remember we talked about layers of paper? And we've done everything with the background that's scrolling, going by. But sometimes it kind of gives you a 3D effect if suddenly the rabbits are behind something. So just very quickly, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you uh, the starting of code where it's the same idea, right? It's going to scroll by and it'll be in front. So I'm going to actually use the code from the sprites that are the background. See this code? Remember, it moves things left to right. I'm going to use all of this code. And that's why I showed you in the beginning how to copy it. I'm going to drag it over to the tree. Look at that little shake. I let go. And now I go to the tree and there it is. Now, here's an idea. Here's the, oh, I went to the back layer. So remember, we, we went it to the front. So that's why the tree disappeared. So if you're like tree disappears, um, there it is. And remember, we have a different starting location. So I didn't want it in the middle. You notice how suddenly it was in the middle. So I'm kind of debugging with you. I like to drag it. I'm like, okay, I want it to start here every time. That's a new location. I'm going to throw the old one away. I have to make sure it goes to the front layer. And there, if I just test this code, there's the tree. Now, if something's closer to you, like right in your face, and something's way in the distance to your eyes, they move at different speeds. That gives it a nice 3D effect, right? Parallax. I think it's parallax effect. So let's kind of simulate that with the tree. So if the tree's closer, instead of doing minus three, let's make it twice as fast. Let's do minus six. And let's see what it does. So the tree, wow, that's kind of super fast. Um, and remember, we have to change some of the numbers because it doesn't go to minus 500. So it'll be a minus, minus 270 and go to 270. And let's see if that works. Whoa, the tree's kind of going pretty fast. And we had this next costume command in here. So I have different trees here, different costumes. So, oh, and I, and I did the Y. See, we're debugging live. I need the Y to be this minus 80. But see how it's in front of the rabbits? Let's give it a try. Let me try minus, minus 250 and go to 250. And there we go. If we play the whole project, you've got the beginning of rabbits on Mars, the background scrolls, the tree runs a little faster in the front, and you can start adding more effects, right? You can have other sprites in the distance that move very slowly like clouds. So I'm going to stop this here now. Uh, hopefully, You've been able to follow along. I'm going to add this to the studio. Notice how I do that. Okay, I'm going to add to the studio. Since I joined as a curator, I can click it, make it green. And that way, 22 Coach N's project is now in the studio. All right, hopefully uh, that helped you see how to kind of catch up on what we did, what we created. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And you can see all the different projects that we had in that studio um, here. So I would love to see you add your scrolling project. And hopefully you can join one of our future sessions and creatively code with us. All right, I'm going to say um, ciao. <laughs>
of course. And can't forget, code on. Have a great one.